I'm Nada Anid, a guest host for Cybercrime Magazine, Vice President for Strategic Communications and External Affairs at New York Institute of Technology. My guest today is Craig Newmark, founder of Craig's List and Craig Newmark Philanthropies. Hey, I'm really uh, glad to be here. So, uh, Craig, what led you to what you are today? What is it in your background that made who Craig is today? A well, big name. Uh, whatever happened in my early years, I started tending towards science uh, and technology, that kind of thing. Simultaneously, and equally important, um, in Sunday school, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Levin was making sure I really understood that you want to treat people like you want to be treated. And from them, I also learned to know when uh, enough is enough. And and what about uh, the the... Your education? In high school, you know, I took all the science and technology I could. I learned uh, coding on an IBM 1620, uh, which is now uh, almost a uh, matter of, it's the kind of computer you might find fossilized along <laughs> with dinosaurs. I learned Fortran 2 using uh, punch cards. Uh, but I got good at it. And I went to a college, Case Tech of Case Western Reserve. I was intending to go into physics, but then I realized, oh, I'd like a job someday. So that's when I went heavy into computer sciences, uh, got good at it. Although uh, the best thing I actually took in college was a course on small group communications, mm -hmm. because that helped me understand some of my uh, many limitations in terms of dealing with uh, humans. And would you call yourself a nerd? Oh, I'm definitely a nerd. In high school, I wear a plastic pocket protector. I wore thick black glasses taped together. And I had marginal at best social skills. And even now, I'm only simulating social skills. So what the, your teachers taught you, which is uh, to do to, to the other what you would like them to do for you, is that now reflected in uh, new Mark Philanthropies? Yeah. Well, again, it's, it's basically the golden rule. You want to treat people like you want to be treated. And to think about that, I reflect on what I learned in high school history from Mr. Shulsky. That is that our country aspires and is supposed to be about fairness, opportunity, and respect. And now that affects everything that I'm doing, not only what I used to do in Craigslist, but now what I'm currently doing in my philanthropic organization. The idea is to find those organizations which stand up for people mm -hmm. and about moving better towards fairness, opportunity, and respect. That also means to me defending the people who stand up for those things, which means defending the country. That means standing up, for example, for vets and their families. It means standing up for uh, women mm -hmm. who are more than qualified for a lot of tech positions, but seem to rarely get a break. So regarding the topic of women in tech or uh, women vets in tech, what organizations uh, do you support uh, specifically? Um, I support a whole bunch of women in tech uh, groups that was starting with Women uh, Who Tech, uh, led by Alison Capin. There the idea is to get uh, people well, particularly uh, male VCs and founders, to take uh, women far more seriously in the startup space. Mm -hmm. So I help fund the Women's Startup Challenge. I'm heavily involved in uh, Girls Who Code. Yeah. The theme is to both uh, get girls in high school excited about uh, STEM careers, uh, to help keep them excited or to get them excited, because when I was a kid, that's when uh, women who were really good at math and science started to become uh, not good mm -hmm. about it. Uh, I'm supporting within the Vets in Tech efforts to train uh, vets, particularly women vets, in, uh, oh, uh, in, you know, in, in cybersecurity careers. The deal being is that in the US alone, there's like 300,000 job positions opening. And through that program, we're starting to train people in the low hundreds. Uh, it's uh, very early to announce it, but I'm also supporting a, uh, oh, a new effort to train around 100 women 
in cybersecurity careers in the space of a few months. Again, the theme, treat people like you want to be treated and do something real about it, which in our culture often means putting one's uh, money where one's mouth is. Another organization that you support is Wikipedia. We know that uh, Wikipedia female authors are very rare. So what are you doing in that realm? Well, there I'm working with folks at Wikipedia, particularly uh, Catherine Mayer, who runs the organization. We have talked in the past about how do you better counter harassment? Because one problem with uh, at Wikipedia is that women uh, editors and by editors they mean people who write and edit, were harassed and sometimes somebody would get really good at uh, doing work at Wikipedia, but then they'd leave. I'm also involved in evolving efforts to get uh, oh, more women involved at Wikipedia. A lot of that is in motion right now. I'm most inspired by some of the efforts where there's, there are a few pr very prolific uh, editors, women editors at Wikipedia, and they decided whenever they get harassed, they write a new article about a, a woman a scientist or engineer, uh, which is to say the harassment gives them the energy and motivation mm -hmm. to write another article, which might be the kind of thing that might inspire a, a girl in grammar school or high school to stay the course yeah. in terms of their own interests in science and technology. What other things can we do to inspire a girls and, and make them aware of this opportunity which has no gender? In the here and now, yeah. the idea is that uh, people, particularly men, we got to uh, better invest in women-led startups and companies. That's the women's startup challenge thing. And just in general, we need to, well, treat people like we want to be treated, yeah. which means in meetings and just in work, to take everyone seriously, particularly uh, women. We need to uh, recognize that we need to promote mm -hmm. the best people, say, into uh, management positions. Managing is hard. Yeah. And no matter uh, who the person is, you know, if they have a raw management talent, talent, they need to be promoted regardless of gender or ethnicity or anything. Um, meanwhile, we can support programs which get people into good jobs yeah. and uh, fire up the uh, pipeline. Mm -hmm. My focus is uh, cybersecurity, one, because I uh, know something about it more than I will let on. Mm -hmm. And right now, our country has a bit of a national security crisis mm -hmm in the sense that we don't have enough people in cybersecurity, that means it's, it's an all-hands-on-deck kind of deal. We need uh, lots of people, good people doing that, and that means that uh, people who might uh, suffer from various forms of bias or prejudice, we need to look past that and to hire the best people into jobs and to give people a break too, and again, we need to treat people like we want to be treated and to reflect on that. And also people who, well, people who like me have been lucky in their careers. Um, we need to, well, let's say, uh, uh, send the elevator back down yeah. to give people a break, to put our money where our mouth is. And uh, the best force multipliers, as my uh, veteran friends uh, say, is to help out by funding uh, good job programs with a focus on job placement. Right. So the Vets of Tech effort led by Catherine Webster and the emerging uh, 100 Women mm -hmm. in 100 Days effort needs to not only have job training, but also job placement. placement. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> if you are uh, thoroughly trained for a job in uh, this kind of career, you want to do good work mm -hmm. immediately. And that's the essence of opportunity. You're providing them with opportunity. Yeah, one, uh, one really uh, nice thing about uh, getting a career in a area where there's a lot of uh, scarcity yeah. of uh, employees is that these are positions where they are the beginning of a career 
and they're also uh, well paid, yes, which is not, not an unpleasant uh, circumstance, <laughs> not unpleasant at all. Financial independence is a good thing. Yeah. yeah. And social mobi economic mobility as well. And this is true throughout the country. Yeah. Like, we are talking about jobs in Silicon Valley and New York, but also everywhere, right. because companies everywhere need people who uh, know what kind of uh, trouble may be heading their way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it is heading their way. Yes. So uh, in terms of uh, the public perception of the nerd and how it may be a deterrent to young girls, what would you say pop culture is doing? Well, pop culture is beginning in the last, let's say, several years to reverse some of the imagery uh, around overly uh, tech people, uh, particularly women. Because if you look, at, well, TV is what motivates a lot of us. And if you look at TV shows, like all the uh, forensic shows, right. in those shows, there are women, for example, in, uh, often in emerging management roles. And there are women who are just doing uh, tough, important jobs in, uh, let's say, in digital forensics mm -hmm. and in related fields. Uh, frankly, um, I'm a fan of a lot of those shows. And then once when I was uh, dropping into a, a local FBI office, a lot of the people doing uh, counter-espionage on the uh, cyber side wanted to uh, meet me. And it looked you just said. like the cast of one of those shows funny. in a impressive and for me kind of uh, funny way, because that was one of the last things I expected to see. Hmm. But uh, there's a lot of people already online doing this kind of work. I've seen it in uh, Washington. I've seen it, frankly, uh, not only FBI, but I've seen it actually at Homeland Security. I've seen it in the White House, even in the Small Business Administration. Mm -hmm. um, the deal is things are happening that aren't getting uh, reported well enough. Yeah. I went recently to uh, South by Southwest, and the person giving the talk on election security uh, was a woman from Homeland Security. So things are happening, and I guess we need to get the word out both in pop culture, yes. but that this matches uh, real life. And even in the, uh, even in the most, uh, let's say, uh, popularized versions of science fiction, we need to get the word out. Uh, Star, Star Wars, Star Wars. Yeah. 40 years ago, yeah. uh, Star Wars, the roles for women were uh, minor, now they're major. Uh, Star Trek, uh, way back, and I'm afraid I remember seeing it on the very first day. I think I was 11 or something. Uh, the roles for women were better than in most uh, TV. Still uh, not all that great. Now things have changed. They need to get better, and they are getting better. So you're saying we need to tell the story in a better way. You're saying the reporting is not done well. Is that the role of the media or of us in the community who, uh, who don't tout enough uh, or speak, the, uh, speak up enough? The responsibility, from my point of view, is everyone's mm. because I think that everyone should treat others like we want to be treated. Mm. The reality is that uh, people need to talk about real life and sometimes pop fiction, by which I often mean uh, either digital forensics or science fiction, because uh, nerd. Mm -hmm. um, the deal is to deliver the message yeah. and then to deliver it again and to remind people that what we're just talking about is what everyone already really believes in, treating people like you want to be treated, but following through with that. Yeah. It's the follow through which is hard because that sometimes means putting one's money where one's mouth is. Yeah. That expression is part of my heritage as a guy from New Jersey. Right. So giving people the resources they need, the tools they need. Yeah. And that often means cash, influence, or training. Mm -hmm. And then, again, job placement. You mentioned forensics and CSI, which, which should tell us that cybersecurity is not just about tech. It could be a job in criminal justice. It could be uh, a, a other types of job in behavioral sciences or even writing about cybersecurity. So 
So it's not just about uh, decoding or hacking or yeah, the uh, ident- is, identifying threats and vulnerabilities. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunity in all forms of uh, STEM and uh, digital forensics or any kind of forensics falls uh, into that area. And the idea is that you get into those areas. Some uh, are great paying uh, careers, some uh, less so, but the idea is that there is a lot of opportunity and you can actually see yourself doing some good to actually help people out. Mm -hmm. And that uh, that ain't bad, that's uh, satisfying. Have you been involved with the Girl Scouts at all? Uh, So, uh, because uh, we know that they started the cybersecurity badges, uh, which is a great thing. I have a a pending request out to learn more about uh, what the Girl Scouts are doing, because that seems to fit uh, perfectly within uh, my wheelhouse in that sense. The idea is to start early, uh, get people trained, and into uh, the beginning of, if not cybersecurity careers, at least greater awareness of Mm this. Um, I love the career aspect of this, but that's because, uh, well, again, because nerd. But the reality is that everyone needs to know a little bit about uh, proper uh, computer-related hygiene. Yes. Um, Meaning, you know, don't do uh, dumb things on your computer. Be aware, for example, of uh, phishing, mm-hmm. because that seems to be the most popular uh, entry vector in terms of the most recent years of uh, politically related uh, oh, uh, hacking. We talked about in the now what people can do in corporate settings. Um, what about the future? Um, well, first we prepare the ground for the future with what we do for girls in uh, high school and, uh, and younger, just to provide uh, serious support for them. And then to encourage everyone to treat everyone fairly, but just to not ever stop, to never stop talking about that, and to keep an eye out for what happened over somehow the last decades, mm-hmm. where a lot of women were going into computer sciences, and I remember this in the uh, early 70s, yeah. and then to try to keep an eye out because somehow that dipped right. and I didn't even notice it dipping because I, as a nerd, prefer to be oblivious to much around me. Mm-hmm. I'm afraid that wasn't only a joke, but uh, just to keep an eye out for things and just to keep saying things mm-hmm. and to bearing uh, witness mm-hmm. to what needs to happen and what must happen. And again, my peers uh, need to keep putting our money where our uh, mouth is. Do you have any final thoughts or advice for women in tech? Uh, To take a look at what's going on with Girls Who Code, take a look at what's going on with uh, Wikipedia, Um, take a look at the pop culture, Mm -hmm. which is increasingly uh, fair to people, and then to put, uh, well, when it comes to people with corporations or wherever who might uh, put barriers in your way, who might want to put limits on your uh, on your growth to uh, call us on it, mm-hmm. call everyone on it, including me if I do something uh, stupid, <laughs> and just to remind us to uh, treat people like we want to be treated. Thank you very much. Oh, it's my pleasure. <laughs>